So with the sun shining bright and we hope we stay that way, coming through turn four, the pace car will be pulling off and we'll make our way for the first of 200 laps here in the 16th stop on the 2009 Nationwide Series calendar. Slowly making their way. And this race is green. Joey Logano has the early lead, and you saw everybody slip sliding through turns one and two, and that's probably because of that modified race, right? Yeah, different uh, tire compound and different rubber down the racetrack. This track is also heated up quite a bit, and a lot of the guys were telling me these cars are a handful to drive to on low air pressure. Yeah, just like Marty said, as far as these modified cars, they run a little bit different tire, a little bit different rubber on them, and I, the first part of the race, I don't want my guy to, to make a judgment on his car until we've run enough to get the, the rubber on our tires on the racetrack where we know what we've got. I, I mean, he might, he might go through some changes changes here and uh, he might be tight right now but he might be loose here in just a little bit so just gotta let the track kind of rubber in a little bit. Kevin Harvick trying to make a move on the 99 of Scott Speed. That is Clint Boyer right in front of him for third. You're on board with Harvick. He has cleared Scott Speed and here comes Greg Biffle in the 16th. So Harvick trying to move forward. Yeah, good racing here. These guys are a little concerned. The track hadn't widened out in their practice yesterday, and they were afraid that it was really going to be hard to pass. But we see some good racing going on here as Harvick tries to take that third spot away. Yeah, you see Harvick using the apron of the racetrack, getting down there. That, there's some extra grip down there if you can get that left front tire just on, below that yellow line. Guys, this is one of those stats that I don't know how it has stayed in place. This is 23rd race. The prior 22, the guy who's leading on lap three has never won. Guess what? We're coming up on lap three right now, so. Uh-oh, doesn't look good for Logano. <laughs> if the numerology holds true, could be tough for him. But look at Carl Edwards. Carl says, okay, lap three's gone. I'll yeah. take the lead. <laughs> yeah, this is not the same Carl that Carl won with in Milwaukee last week. He says it's actually a little bit better, he thinks. Well, I did talk to his crew chief, Dan Stillman, and he does have a setup in this car that's very similar to what they ran last week, and they feel good about their chances today. And while this was going on, we'll tell you that uh, Clint Boyer did, or Kevin Hart got around both Clint Boyer and Scott Speed. He has now moved up to third. There you see him. And the gap, though, is widening. It's about uh, oh, almost 1.6 seconds back from the leader. Yeah, Boyer fell back to uh, the fifth spot. He told me his car was extremely loose until about six or eight laps into the run when the air pressure built up. And what you got to do right there, if your car is like that, what you got to do is try not to lose too many spots. Play deep defense just a little bit in this first part of the run and wait for your car to come in and so you don't want a lot of cars to have to pass back when it does come in. Here's here's one penalty I've never heard of before guys being enforced but the 96 is uh, pulled off the track he's been black flagged there was no crew chief. <laughs> well that'll, that'll get you you need one of those I can tell you. Could you call that a start park candidate? I think that's what you call that. Okay so Willie Allen's behind the wall and he's out of the race. Meanwhile take a look at Mike Bliss he's got uh, Eric Darnell on the high side in the six car and that's a battle for 10th and there is Kyle Busch in the 18 and he is trying to make his way forward as well. Kyle Busch was the first car to go out to qualify and he didn't get the lap I'm sure he was looking for but I don't think we need to worry about him too much. He'll find <laughs> a way back up front. Now that's always a difficult thing at any racetrack, but that was at 10 o'clock this morning. The modifieds had been on the track before that, so that was probably the worst conditions that you could have gone out. So Kyle made the most of it, and now he's going to try to make his way forward. He's trying to. We well, hope these guys get single file as we have a battle for the lead once again. Here goes Joey Logano. He's got the inside line on Carl Edwards. Can he clear him? Looks like he's got him. Go slide right there, back up. What there's you guys your were slide talking job about? right there. That's exactly how you get it done. Just like that, you go in on the bottom and then you kind of just hope the guy on the outside will yield to you or you can get clear before your car slides up the racetrack. So Logano trying to open up a little bit of ground. Carl says, I'll have none of that, thank you. And he tightens it back up. Meanwhile, these guys lead by 1.4 seconds over third place Kevin Harvick. Scott Speed is fourth, Clint Boyer is fifth, and Brad Keselowski runs in the sixth position. And meanwhile, Mike Bliss has still got his hands full with Eric Darnell. Oh, these guys have been side by side for a number of laps here. Well, that's one thing they did with this reconfigured racetrack. Uh, a few years back, they put some extra banking on that outside groove, and it does help this kind of racing. It's side by side racing. The outside car does have a little more banking to, to play with. Yeah, and there's a, a scene that we don't see a lot, and that's a patient Kyle Busch right there waiting for these guys to kind of sort it out where he can start passing each one of them. Let's we'll see Mike Bliss make the pass. Andy, you mentioned the banking. It's two degrees at the bottom of the track, all the way up to seven degrees, which still isn't that much on the high side. 
Yeah. If you get to that seven degrees, you're in trouble, I can assure you that. <laughs> you don't want to be up where it's seven degrees. You'd like to have that, but you don't want to be in that part of the racetrack. Andy, left front corner. Looks like we've had a little contact on the six. Yeah, and that's going to hurt that car just a little bit. This is one of those racetracks, even though it's only a one-mile track, very aero-sensitive, and especially with those front fenders, you've got to have the maximum amount of front downforce here. Yeah, you sure do. It's amazing. A number of guys that I've talked with today were talking about how much they'd worked on the bodies of these short track cars just because they were coming here. They know how important that is. Yeah, I don't know why this track's that way. This is one of the most aero-sensitive racetracks that we ever raced on, and it's not that high speed. You wouldn't think that way, but it is. I, you just got to have that front downforce to get the car to grip. And you can see right here, Eric Darnell's losing some ground. Well, Darnell's coming off his best finish in his career, fourth last week out, and uh, we were talking about he's one of those guys. In fact, uh, our good buddy Brad Darty thinks he's going to win a race here very soon. He didn't think. He stated that he would win a race. Brad Darty said that he was going to win. I and I'm, he's run awfully well. So uh, uh, today may be a tall order, especially uh, with that damage that's on the front, but he has run extremely well. Well, the good news on this damage, it's pretty easy to fix that on a pit stop. He is running 12th right now and has dropped back a little bit further from Kyle Busch, who is running in 11th. So there is Joey Logano as he is now a half a second ahead of Carl Edwards. There's your top five after 11 of 200 laps here at New Hampshire International Speedway. We'll be back with this and more after this message from your word from your ABC station. lap 18 of 200 here on the NASCAR Nationwide Series in New Hampshire presented by CC's Pizza and we're glad you're with us. That's the margin between first and second. Joey Logano in the 20s out in front of Carl Edwards and on the clock that is a half of second. We'll also get you updated. We've got several cars that have started and parked. Uh, Travis Kittleson's behind the wall. Johnny Chapman, Kelly Byers, Willie Allen and Casey Atwood. So five cars behind the wall already. Meanwhile, there you take a look at Brad Keselowski and Jason Leffler. They're going after each other. That's a battle for seventh, guys. This is one of those racetracks that takes a lot of discipline. You have to not overdrive the entry of the corner. You know, your tendency is to want to try to go as fast as you can, but you can lose a lot of time here if you overdrive the race car. Yeah, and these are two guys that have really worked hard all year long to keep themselves right up there with, with Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards in the points. And so they, they've got a battle kind of in between them uh, as far as who's going to be the first nationwide driver up there. Vince, I think you've got more. Well, Brad Keselowski, he's only been here once before, so his spotter, TJ Majors, who spots for Dale Jr. on the cup side, is helping Brad to run a line similar to the leaders and kind of helping him out to let him know where the car is good and where it's not so good. So Brad Keselowski, even though he's a winner already during the course of this season, still working on getting a comfortable spot here at New Hampshire. Shannon? Vince, right behind him, Jason Leffler, that 38 car, saying right now that the car is a little bit tight. I spoke with Leffler before before he climbed in the car before the race and he told me most teams bring their Milwaukee setup and their Milwaukee car here to this racetrack because they're so similar. He said not us. He said we brought something very similar to our ORP. In the past that's been my problem. I cannot run my Milwaukee setup here. He told me in fact this weekend this is the best car he's had at this racetrack since he finished third back in 2004. And Jason Leffler coming off 10 straight top 10 finishes. That's the longest streak in his nationwide series career. Guys, I tell you what, I've been watching this race unfold, and a lot of people at home are probably wondering, why aren't the cars running dead on the bottom of the racetrack, right on the yellow line? And DJ, you well know, a couple years ago, uh, maybe four or five years ago, that Mr. Bear came and repaved this track. It's about two degrees flatter on the very bottom than it is above up one, one lane. So everybody tries to get up on that banking, get some momentum, but when they get tight, and they want to make some real good passes, if they can get on that flatter part of the track, they can get the job done right there. Yeah, you're right, Rusty. You get that left front tire down on there and that flat part and kind of de-wedges the race car a little bit for you when you when these, when it does start to go tight. And they'll utilize that in trying to make a pass and get their car turned in the center of the corner. But they really made it to where you have more racing room through the center of the corner. And we'll see this track widen out throughout the day, but you're still going to make your passes most of the time right on the bottom. 